If you've played Breath of the Wild for any amount of time, you are probably familiar with the Blood Moon, which is a mechanic in the game that occurs once every few nights and it will respawn all enemies you have beaten. However, the very first Blood Moon will not occur until 7 in-game days have passed, which made me wonder, is it possible to beat all 23 Lynels in the game before this first Blood Moon? To make things harder, I attempted this challenge on Master Mode, and because of the way I set up the challenge, I completely emptied my inventory before stepping off the plateau, essentially meaning that I had none of the amazing gear the game gives you early on. Here's how it went. So right off the bat, I warped to the bomb shrine and jumped off the plateau because I knew that near the wreckage here, I would be able to find a bow. Having a bow was the most important thing in this entire run as they are needed to win bomb and more importantly, to BLSS, which I'll explain in a second. I had left where I found this Bokoblin camp, which was a huge stroke of luck as it had extremely valuable things. I just need an arrow. Oh God, I almost got cooked. Okay, a throwing spear, that's pretty cool. Rusty broadsword, I'll take it. Are there any arrows anywhere? Okay, I need to bait this guy into shooting me. Oh, let's go. Okay, okay, never mind. we're good. And a shield. Okay, we're chilling, we're big chilling. I warped back to the Great Plateau Tower and I began my long BLSS all the way to Woodland Tower. In order to explain why, I need to explain my three objectives at the time. The first was to obviously gather weapons, which was the main reason we were going to Woodland because at the top of it lies a Royal Claymore, which is an insane two-handed weapon. The second was to acquire all pieces of the Phantom Armor. It is the best armor you can get early game as it gives you an attack boost and actually enough defense that even with three hearts, you can survive the fireball attack from Silver Lynels. Nothing else though. And the third was to get the towers. See, the towers are great for two reasons. One being that when I marked all the Lionel locations on my map, I had to free ball where exactly they were because I could not exactly pinpoint where they were without the map. And two is that BLSS, if you don't know, is an extremely powerful glitch that allows Link to fly at a constant altitude without consuming stamina. The issue is that in order to activate it, you need to find a surface in which Link does this step up animation, which is pretty annoying to find in the overworld because it's such an arbitrary condition. However, Link can do this consistently at every single tower and at a very, very high height, which is extremely useful. From Woodland, we have a very easy BLSS to Hyrule Castle, and the reason I want to go there is because the castle is littered with insanely good gear. So, oh yeah, it's in here, I think. Is it? I, I don't even... Okay. Arrows is beautiful. Arrows is beautiful. Oh, Royal Bow. There it is. Wait, but that wasn't even the Royal Bow I was talking about. I was thinking of a completely separate one. <gasps> ancient Arrows. That's going to be huge. But Ancient Arrows aren't going to be very useful for us at the beginning because we need the gear from the Lynels themselves. So I could do two things. I could go in there and sneak around or I could go in here. I'm gonna head in here just because there is a flame blade to grab in here. Actually, maybe it might be worth to get the Hylian shield low key. Oh, let's go. Okay, huge, 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 huge. This is actually really, really good because I forgot that this guy drops a bunch of weapons himself. Okay, Thunderblade. Now we are more than equipped to go take out the first Lionel on our repertoire. We have gotten the best shield in the entire game, which is really fucking huge, man. That is a huge benefit. Let's go and let's get out of Hyrule. Beautiful. All right. We just got to trivialize these attack patterns. That bow on his back looks beautiful. We will also get 20 arrows pretty much guaranteed from Lionels. I'm pretty sure that is a guaranteed drop for them, which is fucking amazing. Oh, wow. Royal Claymore is already damaged. I severely overestimated how long it would last. I got to switch to something else. One, two, three, four, five. And just like that, we're golden. There we go, huge. From here, we picked up the remaining pieces of the Phantom Armor and I had a new objective. There are five Lynels in very cold climate and I needed the cold gear from Brito Village to fight them, which meant I needed some cash. I picked up two important towers, Central and Ridgeland. But as I was in the process of climbing Ridgeland, the Breath of the Wild Gods decided to help me out. There is one tech I could go for, but I don't think it's worth it. All right. Ooh, a shooting star.
Wait, hold on. Wait a second. Should I go get that? See, star fragments are rare items in this game that have a random chance of spawning at night, and they serve two purposes. The first is upgrading your gear to max levels, which while is cool and all, it doesn't really help me in this challenge. But the second is that you can sell them for a lot of money, which I still needed to buy the cold resistant gear. Now I could have gone for that gear later, but I wanted it now because then I would be able to travel through Gerudo Highlands, make it to the Yiga hideout, and get my hands on Mighty Bananas, which is an extremely powerful food ingredient, but I'll touch on that in a bit. Regardless, I wanted to see how much money I currently had, which led me to Tabantha Bridge Stable, because in addition to me being able to sell all my stuff there, it was also home to the second Lionel. And at this point, one day has passed. Free, that's free. All right, let's go. One, two. Okay, yeah, the Phantom Armor definitely is making a big difference. Shut up, man. All right, and with this, you should be dead. What? What the hell? Okay, there we go. Now he's dead. Okay, I get it. I get it. You're in pain, bro. Give me your shit. All right, beautiful. More shock arrows. We got another double shot bow and a really good two-handed weapon. There's got to be a place I can BLS at somewhere off, right? Oh, wait, wait. Okay, well, we should check out those chests, actually, because I think, if I remember correctly, one of these has, like, a really good bow in it. All right, let's check. Oh, I was right. I need food, man. Okay, well, now that we've beaten this Lionel, I'm actually gonna, from the Great Plateau Tower, head off to Farron Tower. The reason for this is because Farron Tower is not only next to another Lionel, but it is, it has a lot of hardy durians next to it. One. BLSS, collecting of hardy durians and Farron Tower activation. Later. Beautiful. Is the Lionel right here? Oh, the Inox is right here. Shut up, idiot. Oh, there are mighty bananas here? Wait, 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 I don't have a shield equipped. Oh my God, that was so clutch. Yeah, I guess it was stupid to think mighty bananas could only appear in the Yiga hideout. All right, done. 20 Lionels left. We're honestly getting just stronger and stronger with more and more multi-shot bows. Oh, this guy didn't drop arrows. That actually kind of blows, but that is what it is. Oh, I don't know what to get rid of here. I think the multi-shots are too valuable because they're technically 30 damage. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the Falcon bow to pick this up and to pick this up. Well, okay, let's go check first. Let's go see how much money I can make right now. Now with all these Lionel parts, I went back to Beetle and sold everything, which actually got me enough to buy the cold gear I've needed. But now that I had Mighty Bananas and I had a Mighty Thistle, all I needed was one more puzzle piece to cook the greatest food in the game, a shard of a dragon horn. Basically, if you cook three mighty bananas, one mighty thistle, and one dragon horn, you will be able to get a tier three attack up food that lasts for 30 minutes. This food would single-handedly change the entire scope of the run as stacking it with the phantom armor, I could mow through Lionels. The easiest dragon to find is Feroche, as at 12 a.m. he will spawn in Lake Hylia, which is right next to Lakeside Tower. To kill the time between then, I made the trip to Rito Village, got my gear, and managed to pick up two more towers. Then at 12 a.m., this happened. Feroche, where are you? I'm gonna get this shrine, but where are you, Feroche? Better fucking show up or I'll be heated. What the hell? Do you see Feroche? Because I don't see Feroche. He didn't show up and I had wasted a decent amount of time waiting for him. His next spawn time was at 5 a.m. in Farron Woods at Ricola Spring. And to kill the time between then, I went to take on another Lionel, but accidentally chose our first white maned one. Out. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Shoot him again. We're using a lot of arrows, but that's fine. It's kind of necessary because I came into this fight too early. Yeah, the spears are definitely the easiest. Oh my God, you are getting your ass beat. One, two, three, four. Okay, beautiful. All right, Mighty Lionel Bow. Really good, Mighty Lionel Spear, huge. Okay, then I made my way to Faron and 
It's 5 a.m. Where is he at, bro? I don't understand. This is Ricola Spring, right? Yeah, he's supposed to be here. This stupid wannabe Rayquaza, wannabe Shenron, built like an HDMI cable, built like a rung up towel, built like a toilet paper roll dumbass dragon, did not show up again, dog. Where was he at? <sighs> Well, there wasn't really much we could do about it. Now, one thing to note is that at the time, I had the wrong line of thinking. The logical thing would have been to assume that the dragons do not spawn in this game until the player has achieved something or some kind of event has occurred or a certain threshold has been met. In my mind, I was thinking that this was luck based and I thought that Nintendo made their appearance rate really low in order to prevent new players from becoming too OP. So all I thought was that I had gotten unlucky twice and I decided I would try one last time the following night before giving up completely. In that time, I killed two Lynels in the fair on grasslands and I started panicking. It was 11 a.m. of the third day and I had only killed six out of 23 Lynels. At this rate, I knew I wouldn't be able to finish, so I thought I would go back to Hyrule Castle to pick up more of the most powerful item in this challenge, Ancient Arrows. I got the five on the top of the castle, which was a pain in the ass to climb by the way, killed our seventh Lionel, and got three more. From here, I decided to take out this Lionel near Lanayru, because it was pretty close to Kakariko Village, which had a warp point and could be useful later on. And while I was here, I figured I might as well talk to Impa just in case later down the line, I wanted to try to do the Pura quest to get Stasis Plus. I go kill the Lanayru Lionel, get Lanayru Tower, and make one last attempt for Feroche. Yeah, okay, well, he's not fucking here. I don't, <sighs> I don't know what to do anymore, but Oh, there he is. Oh my God. Wait, Feroche. Oh, 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 thank God. Thank God. Don't miss the horn. Oh, beautiful. Oh, Feroche, why did it take you so long to show up, man? He finally showed up. Turns out, for some reason, dragons will not spawn until you talk to Impa something I would not have figured out. And the only reason it worked out was because I acted on a random whim. But despite this, things weren't entirely okay yet. Uh, all right, let's see. So, what? I hit the scale? Now listen, I don't have a photographic memory. I feel like there are some things in life that will stick the first time I hear them and others that will go in one ear and out the other. But I 100% knew I hit the horn. I felt so confident in this because I thought him showing up was all luck and I did not want to risk him not showing up the following nights. So I made sure to hit his horn. So why did I have a scale in my inventory? For some stupid reason, you can't actually get the other dragon parts until you have one of their scales, meaning that I would have to wait for Feroche another night and then get his horn. Nintendo made getting dragon parts easy and logical challenge difficulty fucking impossible. At this moment, it was early morning of the fourth day with eight Lionels beaten, and I decided to go on a little hunting spree. There we go, easy. That night, I finally got my dragon horn. Went back to the stable to whip it into kitchen like a stir fry and created the greatest meal I'll ever eat. Before my second rampage, I made one last pit stop at Zora's domain to handle the red Lionel there, where I Loki got humbled. So I beat his ass, headed off to the upper Elden area, ate my food, watched the last episode of Attack on Titan to get on my Aaron Yeager type beat and went in. Let's use the Crusher. 
One, two, three, four. Okay, mount. Oh my God, <laughs> he's already halfway. Here we go, this is the strat. There we, oh my God, that was so fast. That took a minute. Did you enjoy, were you enjoying living today? I hate to burst your bubble, but you can't do that anymore. Sorry. I mean, look at his health bar fucking melting, bro. <laughs> this was the initial strat, man. Oh, man. I, I can't believe there were so many shenanigans with dragons in this game. But I mean... <laughs> oh, this is crazy. <laughs> Dude, that had to have been like 30 seconds. There's no way. There's no fucking way. That took any longer than 30 seconds. <gasps> A star fragment. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. There we go. Done. And done. And you're done. All right. Oh, my God. That's what I fucking thought. Oh, my God. There we go. And with that, we have proved that it is possible to kill every Lionel before the first Blood Moon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!